All right, so welcome back to another installment of Adventures in Coding with Python and Django and Pegasus. And today I am going to talk a little bit about um, Langchain and LLMs and OpenAI and all of that good stuff. And to start with, I'm just going to talk, uh, I'll, I'll show a quick demo and then um, I'll talk about how it's built and uh, about what I've learned so far in the process. Um, so first, the problem statement. So this is the Pegasus documentation. Um, it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. And uh, and I was wondering if I could build a Slack bot that knew how to um, kind of like use natural language and you know GPT and those, those good things to answer questions based on the docs. Um, and so, so I've managed to do that. And I will quickly show you a demo of that before getting into anything else. And it's going to be this. OK. So, um, so I'm going to ask it something that uh, only the Pegasus documentation would know, like, uh, how do I make a super user? Um, and so this is going to go kind of query my custom AI. And it'll come back with. Uh, this Python manage.py promote user to super user, which, which is a Pegasus management command that, that only exists in Pegasus. Um, I can say things like, uh, you know, I want to make a view that only team admins can access. And so it's saying use this, again, this team admin required decorator or the login and team and team admin required mixing classes. Again, these are Pegasus specific things. Um, and finally, maybe we can just say like what CSS frameworks. And so these are very generic questions, um, but the, the bot is kind of smart enough to, to know that I'm asking about Pegasus um, and will happily list out the frameworks that are supported. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. And um, so let's go into a little bit about how this works. Um, and so under the hood, it's using um, this cool library called Langchain, which uh, as they will describe here, lets you build applications with LLM LLMs through composability. Um, and in particular, they have this question answering over specific documents. Um, option and basically you load the data um, you create an index on top of that data and then you query it and so it's actually like kind of crazy easy to do this and and I was I was able to get this proof of concept working in you know less less than an hour and most of that stuff was just kind of wrestling with installations and things like that okay so I'm going to try to explain how this works, and uh, I'm almost doing this as a brain dump to uh, myself because it's something that took me a little while to figure out, even though I barely know anything about this. Um, so the pieces involved with Langchain, um, you, you start with your document loaders, um, and that's, that's what's going to... Uh, take the content that you want to index. So that, in my case, that's the, um, that's the Pegasus docs. Um, Langchain provides all these different document loaders. So you can load content from a directory or you know, a Facebook chat or Figma, all, all, all sorts of stuff. And these document loaders, they take your um, source data and they turn it into like a document, which is a Langchain thing that is just, it's a consistent API. Um, once you have documents, you split it up into text with a text splitter. I didn't mess with these too much, um, but essentially because the uh, the language models only can store sort of like a fixed quantity of text, you want to split up the text uh, into chunks. So that basically takes your documents and, and chunks them up. Um, you store that data uh, after you've chunked it in a vector store. And behind the scenes, there's, there's this kind of um, hidden process to you where the text is actually converted to um, 
a vector of features. Uh, so you'll, you'll have, you know, this chunk of text created by the text splitter. You'll pass it to an AI, mo AI model, usually uh, OpenAI embeddings, and that will return a vector, just, just like a, a long array of numbers that is OpenAI's sort of information about what it thinks is in that text. Um, you then save that vector into something. So Chroma is uh, one that you can just run off your file system. So that's kind of a quick and easy one to get started. Um, I started with Chroma and then ended up switching to PG Vector, which stores those vectors in Postgres. It's a Postgres extension. Um, and then after that, you can basically retrieve them, um, which is which is querying, querying the data. So I'll show you uh, what I did just for kicks. Um, so yeah, so let's start with building the index. Um, and so this is a Django management command um, that will build an index for a particular zip URL. I'm, here I'm saving it to a Pegasus team. So um, you don't really need to worry about that. Um, but the idea is that the idea that I have was that I'm going to integrate this into Community Keeper, which is this product that I've been coding on the side. Um, and so you could imagine uploading your documentation into this app, having it available for your team, and then the bot can query your docs. So that's that's where I'm going. Hopefully, I'll get there in in a few more um, a few more days. Um, from there, we're gonna build an index, and so. This is kind of, so I, I'm just creating these kind of like zip index data model. It, it doesn't really have anything in it. Um, it's got a zip file path extension filter. So like you could, in my case, I'm saying only pull out the markdown data. Um, and the index itself has a slug, which is just a unique ID that's used for the database. And this has index field, which I just use to set, um, if something goes wrong in the index creation, then it'll be set to false. So first I just create that data model and then um, get the zip file from the zip URL. So I'm, I'm literally just like, you know, uh, I'm literally just using this zip file URL here as the link that I'm passing it. So it's downloading the uh, documentation from directly from GitHub. Um, and then I, I wrote this zip file loader class. So this is, it's just a subclass of um, base loader, which is the same thing that all of these document loaders subclass. So um, they didn't have one for zip files. So I just quickly wrote one kind of based on their, um, the one they had for directories. And that way I, I don't have to mess with um, extracting the zip file to a directory and using those things. Um, so it just opens the zip file looks through the entries, does that um, file extension check uh, to find the files that match, um, passes, creates some metadata. So this is, you can tell, um, you can tell your index sort of like where the stuff came from. And then if you want, uh, you can return that source information in the, um, in the response. And then, um, so that, that lets you say like, oh, this, this answer came from the, you know, the team's documentation or the, um, you know, the release notes or whatever. Um, then you just read the file and um, yield one of these document objects, which is uh, the Langchain interface for, um, for passing this content around. Um, so once we have that sort of loader, which whose job it is to um, spit out our documents, um, then we do the rest of the steps. So we use that text splitter to split things into chunks. I just did the default thing. So I haven't played with this a lot to see like if you can get better performance. Um, and if you're following along now, we're in this um, text splitter area. So we split those documents into chunks. Um, then we use the open AI embeddings to, um, call this one, one function call, which will, um, run all those chunks through the open AI API 
get those embedding vectors that we asked for and um, save it to our Django database. And so that, that's really all, um, all the code you need to uh, you know, index one of these things and stick it in the DB. Um, if we want, we can, um, like we could quickly look at what the, uh, what this looks like under this, under the hood. Um, so there's these Langchain PG collection. So this, it, it'll create like a new collection, uh, basically for, um, for each index that you create. And then, um, it creates this embedding table, which I'm not going to query because the embeddings are these super wide vectors. Um, but they, that just saves this sort of AI readable uh, vector of, of the text. So each, each row in this PG embedding table corresponds to one of those chunks, I believe. And again, don't take, I'm, I'm learning all this stuff as I go, so um, don't, don't take my word as the source of truth. So, um, that is building the index and then querying the index is, um, similarly sort of straightforward with these tools. Um, and so first you just get the database. And so, um, again, you can, you can just use the same connection string and collection and embedding function, um, and return the database. Uh, and Langchain will just provide uh, a nice API around that. Um, and then you just query it. And this query DB function, I think, is built into Langchain. Did I write this? I wrote this, but um, it just creates this uh, index wrapper and then you query it with sources. Um, and so those sources, uh, so yeah, so if we want to see the sources, um, we could say like print, we can print the whole results. Um, I think it's, well, I think it's sources, but let's, let's see. Oops. Um, so let's, let's do that again, but now it'll print out the sources as well. Um, what's another good question to ask about Pegasus? Uh, what Django version? Django 4.2 came out yesterday, so I need to upgrade that, but hopefully, okay, well, so this is actually a good example. So we can see um, it says Django 4.0, but it's it's referencing the release notes. Um, and the problem with it referencing the release notes is that um, that is an old version of the release notes. So Pegasus now supports Django 4.1, which as of two days ago was the latest version. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not perfect, um, but you can see there uh, that um, how the sources work and you could have the bot um, cite its references as well. Cool. Um, so the other thing I played with is creating these indexes off of the actual Slack content. So um, if you haven't seen any of the other live streams I've done, so uh, this tool Community Keeper it keeps an archive of all your Slack messages. Um, and uh, so the other idea I had was, could we just throw all those messages into one of these models, maybe the same model, maybe a separate one, um, and then have the AI answer questions that are from the Slack channel. Um, the results weren't as good, um, but so in that scenario, the only thing we have to change is the loading process. Um, so if we look at the, um, let's see, index workspace. Um, so if you want to build the Slack index, the code for this is almost exactly the same. Um, but instead of using that zip file loader, we use a Slack message loader. Um, and I am in this function, just going through all of the Slack messages in the team using a, um, just a Django query set. And um, I'm grouping them by thread so that um, the sort of Q&A 
context is all is all there together. Otherwise, if each individual message was just kind of dumped in, it would be kind of, I think uh, it wouldn't work as well. Um, so I've grouped them by thread uh, as as sort of documents, and what that hopefully means is that we could ask like, uh, you know, we could ask a question that comes up in a thread. So maybe we'll try this, um, you know, this wagtail having, okay, that, that's not a good answer. Um, so, uh, well, one thing that I know comes up a lot is um, test versus Stripe, test versus live uh, Stripe products. So let's see, what's the best way to handle test versus live Stripe products? I'm not overly optimistic about this, but yeah, okay. So put the product IDs and live mode setting and environment variables. That's, that's a reasonable answer, and I probably got that somewhere from the, from the Slack. Um, so this is pretty, Pretty cool. Uh, I've been able to stitch all this stuff together just sort of, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe two or three days of work um, with a lot of other stuff mixed in there. Um, but I feel like it's uh, just scratching the surface of, of what these tools can do. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that was helpful. If uh, Nothing else, it'll be context for some of the next set of work that I'm doing, uh, which will be kind of figuring out how to hook this up to a UI and um, messing around with it some more. Alrighty. So that was uh, messing around with Langchain, LLMs, and searching documents. I'll see you next time.